Uncertainty is an invitation for the artists, for our program and the scientists to be together. I, I like to think that we are crossing thresholds and there we, some passages and uh, caverns and tunnels appear and we walk through them together in art and science. Humans have not known about quantum mechanics until a hundred years ago, but the universe has from the very beginning. <laughs> We're just trying to understand how the universe copes with quantum mechanics and copes with uncertainty. One of the basic things that change our lives is normally the science that is based on curiosity, not necessarily to solve problems. Curiosity-driven research is the one that has changed our lives uh, radically for hundreds of years. One of those examples is quantum mechanics. This year, 2025, of course, has been declared the International Year of Quantum Science. And as a curator that's worked quite extensively with the realms of the very small, whether it's particle physics or quantum mechanics, science describes the hidden architectures of the universe. And I believe that art, like physics, is a way of revealing it. Art helps us imagine quantum physics more deeply, because as Feynman said, also needed is imagination. This thing about uncertainty uh, makes some people a little scared and so on, but it's just part of life. I'm here to talk to you about making a poem and what we might unmake in the process of making a poem. Poets are always reminding each other that the word poetry arrives out of an ancient Greek word for making and that the poem is at least etymologically, if not atomologically, a made thing. This led me to be really interested in CERN. Kind of, I guess I'm thinking about experimental language practice and experiments in <laughs> caves brings me to kind of the experiments of, of quantum physics in the ground also. There's something about kind of exploring the mysteries in these dark spaces. In a letter written in 1816, Keats describes negative capability as an acceptance of a half knowledge a model of uncertainty, which implies another half that's always hidden from view. That shadow half is located in what Keats imagines as a most holy location, a penetralium or innermost chamber of mystery. What would happen if one placed a bet on the idea that knowing nothing, the knowledge of nothingness, is the basis of wisdom? This is actually not a very new idea, despite Richard Feynman, even though it remains a surprising and unsettling one. Recognition of nothingness or emptiness or what we call shunyata is at the very heart of an ancient way of knowing and acting in the world. So not knowing is a way of knowing and acting. And the best of art and the best of science is united in this appreciation of the unknown because that's what drives us. It allows us to imagine, which is what makes the unknown known in our consciousness. It drives our curiosities, it motivates our dialogue, our conversation. This link reinforced my understanding that time is not only a physical dimension, but it can also be a deeply inequitable social construct. My collective project, CPT Symmetry and Violations, was an exploration of those varying scales and dimensions of time and temporality, spanning from the particle, to the personal, to the interpersonal, to the communal, to the global, to the cosmic. Through that project, we wanted to extend a dialogue between the quantum realm and everyday realities by intentionally paralleling the co scientific concept of CPT with the culturally significant notion of colored people's time. The project aimed to confront and deconstruct racialized perceptions of time and punctuality that have historically marginalized, stereotyped, and oppressed black communities like the ones that I come from. And in this light, quantum physics becomes a prismatic lens through which we can reimagine time itself, not as a rigid, um, inexorable flow in a predetermined forward direction, but instead as a malleable dimension, open to reinterpretation and open to transformation.
I've been developing um, kind of instruments around my physical voice uh, through AI, through mo uh, synthetic voice models. I have like trained so many different ones uh, on my own voice. I'm very interested in how uh, specifically voice is um, modulated, you know, and I've been um, training all these models, building kind of uh, archivals uh, of those bodies I'm leaving or those selves I'm leaving behind. They are built on improvisations and using all these tools to compose and creating patterns, creating um, uh, landscapes of uh, choral landscapes where my voice is not like a li the leader in most of them. It's just like a, a part of that choir. Inspired by the dual quality of light, we propose an experiment of our own. A rehearsal in duality, an experiment in doubling, in thoughtful inconsistency. For this first rehearsal, we offered an exercise in thinking through and with two kinds of experimental apparatuses that allow for the recording of light, chronology and observation. Jan Judice, the head of the theory department here at, at CERN, with whom I had a really beautiful conversation, uh, uses um, sand dunes to explain how, why we live in an unstable universe. Uh, voilà, je suis là après 20 ans que j'avais fait le tour à pied de l'accélérateur. Uh, ça m'a pris 5 heures, à, uh, 5 heures 50. En fait, je me suis comparé en proton. There are other ways of thinking about time that are not tied to linear modes of history or linear modes of cause and effect, but you can look at other places, right? And so not using the master's tool, the master's tool is the clock itself. Um, and I talk about that history, but using other tools um, in order to get to a reality where we can thrive and be, yeah, be more abundant. And the overarching thread was that Time is not defined in any specific way in, in their work. It really depends on the context. It really depends on the question. There are huge gaps in our capacity to sense quantum phenomena and bridging that gap is possibly one of the biggest and most uncertain challenges that quantum culture will have to tackle in various ways. In one phrase, the, the choir sings, if we could start with something, what would, we, what would it be? And this question, simple, simple but disturbing, is the seed of a larger re reflection um, on how can we, in the midst of uncertainty, stop to think instead of from the end of the world about the beginning. Uncertainty, we find potential um, for different worldviews and based on difference, essentially. As a convener of an art science indigenous knowledge context, I was struck by the question of an instrument and a machine. And in the Connect residency, one of the things that came was what type of engines? You know, these are. Uh, radio array telescopes in South Africa. They are put in ancient landscapes filled with um, sonic rocks that have K or paintings that are you know, hundreds if not thousands of years old. So how do we come up with ways of thinking about them in, in, in a more interesting way? The Alphorn with its long flare shape becomes more than a musical instrument but a conduit, a resonant a resonator of space and time. Hum explores the trumpet-like shape geometries across scales from microscopic to cosmic. Experimental noise music like the forms explored in Hum is rooted in vibration, reverberation and amplification, just as wind instruments shape and transform breath, and just as black holes bend and manipulate light, Noise stretches and distorts the fabric of sound itself. 